The basic use case of any form is to submit important data about something or someone. We may have come across physical forms for opening bank accounts or maybe for admission into some universities and others. After the web and internet came into picture, the use of form became extremely popular. HTML form is now widely used in login pages, sign up pages, for booking tickets, saving address on Flipkart or Amazon and many other places where the user has something to provide and submit. Hello, welcome back everyone and thank you very much for joining me today in this lecture. In today's video, we are going to discuss about HTML forms and various input tag types which are possible in HTML. Also, before going into the content, if you love this video, then give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, please do not forget to hit the bell so that you do not miss any of the notifications from our channel. Let's get started. Alright, so we have opened VS Code with a very basic form.html file and here we want to create our form and everything related to form. So also we have a section uh, just kept separate for our purpose of sanity and we'll create the form just like that. So I'll definitely explain you what exactly is this action attribute does. So Okay, let me just wrap around all these comments here uh, for my own reference. So action is something that is one URL. When the form gets submitted, it calls the URL and requests. Also, there is some another attribute called method. So method can be get or post. So for the timing, let me keep it as get because I want to see how the things are happening. So the first input tag that we want to use is text input it's very simple very similar and um, in most of the cases we have used this text as the type but before that let me just keep everything separate so we'll just create a division or div and then um, a label for the purpose of uh, let me just take it at for as first name and uh, name it as first name Also, this input here, input type as a text. I'm using emit for quicker uh, like typing. So name can be, let me give it name as like first name. This is the key of the data that we want to send as first name and value, the, the value of this first name will be getting from the user input. I also let me provide uh, first name because we have put this uh, for and uh, this id as same so this level is now linked to this input and let me see what happens what have we got so see since now the level also is linked with it so if we click on first name it points me to the input tab so like we can type my name okay so next up what we can simply do is uh, just duplicate it and then this can be my last name with that so if we click on last name it goes to it and if we click on first name it focuses on the first input box okay and also one more thing that i want to mention is every form has to have a submit button so i'm putting the submit button here it is nothing but a normal button with one attribute of type as submit uh, submit okay let me name it at submit button so yeah we have got the submit button so now what happens uh, if we click on it it don't do anything because we haven't provided the action attribute of the form so what does that action attribute do so whenever we submit a form this action attribute tells html that you need to go to this url to submit the form or uh, for our purpose we will be using this request.html but in more in real world scenario, this has to have some backend server connected to it. So let me just put the action as dot request so that I can show you how the data is getting passed. So, okay, so maybe, okay. So now I've got the first name and last name. And now if we submit, see, it goes to the request page because I have 
explicitly provided the action attribute as request or html so it goes to the request html and uh, like in this request html i have put a very small amount of javascript so that it takes the key and value pair from the url parameters so that i can show you it is submitting it is doing something and it is not uh, like normal button this submit button does something also one more thing since how the submit button is different so if I put a name, let's say Samir and uh, last name as uh, something with with yeah. So now if I press our enter key, so it will also submit. So that's the benefit of having submit button. Okay, so next up we want to show how we can take email as input. So let me create another div uh, with a label for email. Yeah, so you've got it. So let me just provide the name. Now email can be something. Now in this case it won't complain. But if we just remove the at symbol, once we submit it complains like this include a at. So by default it runs a validation check for input for email input. So that's the difference between normal text and uh, email input tab. So the next step we want to show you is phone, how we can take phone number. So in this case, the input would be tel or telephone basically. See, type tel is something for the phone. Name also I'm taking as phone and ID as phone again. All right, we got it. But uh, remember, phone can take any of the string inputs as well because we do not know in various other countries they can have some different um, characters like pause or plus or anything. So let me just provide it and if we submit it, see we see the key value pair like the first name, uh, last name, email, phone. So this first name, last name, these keys are coming from this name attribute we have provided for name attributes. And the value that we are passing during filling the form so the, all these values are coming also one more thing that you might uh, see is this percent four zero or percent two b these are some of the symbols that is by default encoded by html uh, while submitting the form so for the server to understand and if we want to parse this data in the backend server we have to have something so that these url parameters can be decoded back to our normal at symbol or plus symbol or anything all right so now after that we're going to have a uh, very important like password how we can uh, take input of password so label for password input type as also password very easy to guess though if you have guessed already name as password also the id as password how password is different like if we type something then we won't show the uh, characters we wouldn't be showing the characters html doesn't allow so that's how the password input is taken one more thing that i want to take uh, like maybe your favorite accent color or theme or something like that all right so that also can be done using Mm, a label for accent color maybe for this purpose the input would be color input type would be color input color and the name is the same id also the same as accent color so that we can connect the label with the input all right then we have got it yeah so this accent color input gives you a whole palette you can choose any of the colors like blue green any anything so the input gets passed as some hex code value so if you ignore this plus two three symbol then five zero b nine d c is the hex code all right next up we want to discuss about uh, something called date as input type so let me create a the div with a label dub get a but input date 
that's pretty simple and the id also dov because we want to connect with the for see we have got now date picker okay anything can be picked so so that's how we can provide input as a date next thing i want to show how we can have radio buttons so radio buttons are something that has very common use case in html forms so it's mostly used for choosing some values which is either of many values i mean one single particular value so uh, for example gender um, gender with a label male female and here in this case the input would be radio and name i'm putting as gender and id also as uh, male similar stuff we can do with female also and uh, name equal to gender because why am i putting gender because gender can't be both it has to be either male or female it can't be the both thing like male and female it can't be so that's why we are trying to use a uh, radio button here so if we press yeah see now this male and female either one can be selected but if it would have been like gender one and gender two maybe for the name then both are independent radio buttons those can be selected or i mean not selected but since we want either male or female we want to have the name as same that's how we can use radio buttons next up which is very important and pretty common in lot of forms is check boxes so for this purpose let me take as uh, favorite sports so how check boxes and radio buttons are different because check boxes can have multiple selection right? you may love cricket and football and hockey you may love only cricket you may love football and hockey so something like that so level one level for cricket and very similar to it uh, you can have two more sports maybe football and hockey so we have got uh, three favorite sports so see now we have got uh, favorite sports this will be checkbox my bad see cricket and football and uh, hockey there are multiple inputs possible all right so next up we are so how we can use time uh, as an input type maybe wake up time and just put me under a label right so we have a time picker we can take like anything maybe seven seven four so it can be anything okay next up i just want to say one more input type can be number uh, where it is only number like age age can't be any string so it can have an integer value or any number so that have an input type as number so label for age here we can put some couple of other things like we can have at least minimum age of maybe 18 and max can be 150 i'm guessing that no one is alive more than 150 years old so yeah so here we can provide uh, 23 it gets submitted but if we provide uh, less than that value so maybe five it doesn't get submit because minimum value is equal to or more than equal to 18 should be so that's the case with this minimum and maximum age values one more thing I just want to quickly walk you through is one range slider. So, like score, some some score point maybe. The score can be anything. And for this purpose, we can take range type as the input. So it will give you back a, a pretty nice range slider. See, we have got this range slider, and here we can provide the score name and ID as score and also some uh, different attributes like um, mean value maybe mean value is like 10 
and uh, max value max value is 100 also um, range stiff stiff can be 10 so it will from start from 10 then go to 20 and then 30 something like that so that can be like that like 10 20 30 40 50 and up to 100 that's how we can have a range slider and uh, yeah that's pretty much uh, more or less most of the input types those are possible there are a couple of others also but uh, but those have very rare used cases now i want to show you this method so why i have uh, chosen this method as gate so see gate has something that we want to get something from the database or something from the server so gate is mostly used when we try to achieve something from the server when we try to fetch something from the server let's imagine a data which is already there in the database and we want to get that from the database so that is why the get request is used so here get is the method but for any other purposes like if we want to save some data from the client to the backend so in those cases we need to use post as the method how is it different so okay let me just quickly fill the form So, okay so now if we submit the form it gets submitted and also everything is now like visible like this uh, first name last name and also the password so sensitive information is visible in the url parameter that is definitely security blockage that we do not want to do so i have just chosen get request or get method just to show you how this data gets passed and what is the key value pair like first name last name email phone that is we have given as our name attribute so that's how it is getting but in most of the cases we get a post request we provide post request now if we change this to post i don't think you will see any of this so let me just quickly refresh it and submit see now forget about the what happened to the page just see the url parameter there is nothing exposed in this so this is the correct method that we should use while user is posting some sensitive information or sensitive data to the server so that is the difference between get and post request get is mostly used for fetching some data which is already saved but if you want to sign up the user because the fresh user is getting created in the database for that purpose we have to use post request there are a couple of other requests like patch delete port those definitely have to do something with updating a data deleting a data i mean definitely you can find from the name of the method but from the html bare html we can pass only two types of method one is get and the second is post so yeah i mean that's pretty much uh, all that i wanted to discuss in this uh, lecture so i hope you have really enjoyed this video and if you do definitely uh, please give it a like i would love to uh, enjoy your comments if you have any question i would love to reply to the comment and um, thank you very much again for joining me and watching the video hope to see you in my next video